Hey there, everybody. So I got some time before I go to dance rehearsal, so I thought I'd tell you my story on how I ended up on a wheelchair. So I bought a motorcycle because I was engaged to a girl, and she was using. I let her use my car for her business, like to get to and from her business and transport certain things for her business. So. She was using my car so much that I thought we could use another vehicle, you know, since I was like, we were engaged. And I put her on the, the car loan. We, we actually got a new loan and I put her, we refinanced and we put her on there. Then I got a motorcycle and um, we were pretty happy with that. Like we were doing good. She would go on rides with me like twice. I think she, yeah, she went on two rides with me, but they were really short because she was really scared of it. Um, and yeah, and then I was, uh, I worked, I don't know, the way I rode, it was like a 20 minute to 10 minute ride, depending on the traffic, but um, on, you know, at nighttime coming home, 10 minutes for sure, 10 minutes for sure. I lived in downtown Miami and I worked in the Aventura Mall, so it was, uh, yeah, it was a fun ride. So I was coming home from work, it was like one o'clock two o'clock in the morning something like that didn't drink didn't smoke nothing <clears throat> and i was just i came home and i live in an apartment building and you know it's a garage parking lot and i was going up the garage and i would do this thing that like going up the incline i would like rip it in first gear and like lean forward on the bike and like kind of like burn out a little bit without like really doing a burnout kind of peel out a little bit and um I did it on the fourth going up to the fifth level, like where it's the last one where I go to park my, my bike. And I guess I just gave it too much throttle and I couldn't slow down to make the turn and I jumped off the bike. And I don't know how fast I jumped off. I don't remember the accident. I just, we just put it together because I always had my GoPro sitting like here on my chest. And for some reason it, it got pointed upwards when I entered the garage. So um, I jumped off the bike and like I'm riding, you know, riding like this. And I, I jump off the bike. And when I jump off, I guess I turn to the side and backwards and I hit a concrete column hole like the little yellow ones. And uh, they kind of sucked. Uh, the bike flipped around and did something and, like punctured my, my, my back somewhere to like chip my, my pelvis behind. So that's why there was like blood at the scene of my accident. Um, what else? I was like, the person that found me was some girl that she goes to her car to smoke weed because her parents, you know, are in town. And she heard what sounded like the bike. And it was just me breathing all weird. And then when I, how do you say, when somebody came to me, I like woke up and started talking to them. and all this stuff and I don't know and I was like refusing to like be put under to like for they so they could uh I think it's in, in, in incubate or intubate no intubate yeah intubate right incubate is like for pregnant women and stuff like that or incubate is like for like birth scenarios um with eggs I think so yeah they put me under and then they put tubes down my mouth and I woke up in the hospital like two or three days later Woke up in the hospital. I really didn't try moving my legs, but I, I couldn't. I couldn't talk. I had tubes in my mouth, and you know, my family wouldn't exactly tell me what I did, what happened. You know, they wouldn't tell me the extent of what was going on. You know, and like my, my fiance at the time, I was like trying to write in her palm, and I was trying to ask for a pen so I could like write, and nobody was like giving me anything. And it was it was actually really frustrating. And uh, they took me off of the. They took me the tubes off. I think earlier than they wanted to. I guess I don't know. That's what they said. That's what they told me. But I do remember I was in the hospital and like I had this one experience overnight with this lady that was like watching the ICU area. You know, there's people like making noise and doing all this shit. And I'm like hopped up on drugs and I'm like, I don't know what the hell's going on. You know what I mean? So I'm, I hate being late to work and I hate, you know, not going, I like no shows. Hell no, I would never do that, you know? So it's like I had it in my head that I had to go to work and I was trying to tell the lady like, hey, can I get a phone? I got to make a phone call. And she's like, what? No, who you got to call? I told, her, I told her my job and she wasn't, she was just rejecting me instead of saying, 
hey, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, your job isn't open. You know, don't worry about it, go back to sleep. She just kept on refusing me and refusing me and refusing me. So, and not telling me anything. I was like, come on, I gotta call my job. And she was just telling me no. And then I freaking, like, I have, uh, a, like, a chest plate and a back plate that's, like, velcro together to, like, keep my spine straight because I just broke it and they put, like, rods. They put two rods and four, four screws to, to basically unite four vertebrae. T12 to L1. Um... And the lady was refusing me, and I literally tried to get out of bed. Like, I was, like, over the, the side of the bed like that, like, trying to get out of the bed. Because I didn't know that I didn't have my legs, you know? That I, I didn't have use of my legs. Nobody told me. Like, I didn't really know. I didn't know. I, it didn't click like that yet. It, it clicked then. When, when that happened, it clicked then. Because I didn't fully, fully go over because I was like, oh, shit. Like, I, I didn't really think, oh, shit. Like, I can't move my legs. I, I just didn't go over because I was like, all right, something's wrong. I can't. This doesn't feel safe. That's what that I was thinking in my head. My head's very, like, black and white kind of ways. So I don't really, I don't know. So, um, I didn't really fully go over. And then she, like, you know, made all this fuss and grabbed me. And then some guy that I guess I was talking to before that I, when I was, you know, I mean, I've always been kind of coherent. But, you know, like, I was messed up. But I was on drugs, man. I was seeing stuff, too. I even told my, I, I'll never forget. I'll tell you guys more. Um, so some guy walks up and he goes, Alexis, what's going on, man? What's happening? And I told him what's going on. I was like, hey, man, I got to make a phone call. I got to call my job and tell him I'm not going to go and stuff like that. He's like, hey, man, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Your job's not open. I was like, oh, all right. And I even said, I was like, I don't know why this lady didn't tell me that, dude. I would have calmed down right away. You know, I just thought I had to be at work. I didn't know what time it was. I, you know, I'm freaking delusional. And, um, yeah, he, I don't know, I hope she learned a lesson from that. I really hope she learned a lesson from that, and I hope anybody that's watching this learns a lesson from that too, because the way you communicate with somebody is really important, you know, and like getting the message off right, and it's something that I've been working on too, so I can't, I'm not, I'm basically a hypocrite saying this, but, like saying what I just said, but I'm trying, I work on it, you know, I try to communicate as best as I can, and then when you get into a difficult situation where you're frustrated, it's hard to, you know, get out the right meaning and keep your composure so the person can, you know, help you out. So anyway, so the part that happened, and I calmed down, and whatever, you know, the lady got mad at me, and she's like, oh, man, you almost, you could make me lose my job. She was all worried about her job and stuff like that, and worried about, like, you know, her thing, you know, her job and her stuff, and, I, and I, that pissed me off, too. So I hope, I hope that lady, hopefully, I hope she sees this. I highly doubt it, but, all right, so, and then I was seeing stuff. I was seeing, like, I was laying in bed and there was like a string across me and it was like ants doing gymnastics on the damn string. Like jumping up and down on the string so it was crazy. And then the whole hospital looked like a spaceship at one point. This wasn't the whole time of course. These delusions that I saw, delusions that I saw were like for like five minutes at the most. It's like that. And then I saw like the whole hospital look like an alien spaceship. I swear. Everything looked like an alien spaceship. Everything was like dark and green and kind of smoky and stuff like that. And it was, it was kind of funny. And I told, my, I told my mom about it, and then I was getting transported to different areas through the hospital. And when I was getting transported, I swear, it was like, I, it was like canyons. I was like being pushed through like canyons. Uh, yeah. So it was like canyons, and then like a pasture. It's all good green. It's crazy. Alright, and then they took me to put like this IV thing inside my, like a, a line that goes straight to my heart, and I still have a scar from it, it's like a little circle. It's a little high, it's like up here, it was a little down here, and it was really gross because when I was leaving and they took that out, it, it squirted out blood, like pew! It was really crazy, <laughs> it was funny. Um, but I don't really remember the, the pain of that because I was already so hopped up on drugs that I don't remember that because I could only imagine that probably hurt. <laughs> Uh, I just remember them taking it out and taking it out. It felt really, really weird. And, um, yeah. Hey, what's up? I'm making a video. Okay. Yeah, that was my grandmother. I lost a 
show me something. Um, so yeah, and I got a little emotional when I was thinking about the canyon and stuff like that. Because it was really pretty. It was really, really pretty. It was beautiful. And it was like going through a canyon. There was like rocks and canyons and like green, blue skies and, you know, beautiful, like perfect weather. And then all of a sudden it just opens up into like this like valley almost, you know. Not a valley because it wasn't like a valley like that, but it was just like, boom. Like something that you would see at a Lion King or something like that. And just all oh, open and, and it was really nice. But, um, yeah, that's my story on how I got injured. It's been two years and, like, two months now, or, like, a month and a half. And, um, I told my, my best friend that I'm, like, in a way I'm thankful that this happened to me, you know, because it showed me a lot of things in my life. It, it gave me a purpose, a different kind of purpose or an extra Ulterior, uh, uh, ulterior motive, ulterior purpose in life. It gave me like uh, now I could like I I come up with so many ideas like now I, I have a whole nother avenue to throw my ideas towards because I'm in this I'm in this area so I can't help but think of things that will make my life easier like all the time. Oh my God! I thought about something last night that is a okay. Like I'm really gonna I gotta put the patent out for this and just freaking start selling it and just make some money from that and then start living my life. Um, but, but yeah, I, um, I, um, actually get to my Lord with that. But yeah, thanks for watching you guys. I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time for this video. A lot of people have asked me for it, but yeah, that's how I got injured. I mean, there's a video on my YouTube of my accident. Like, I put the video up because I was recording. So the video is up there. Go look at my, at my page, look at my videos. And it's like in 2018, uh, it happened January 28, 2018, so I probably posted it like March or something like that. So just look back there and you'll find it. Like you'll see, like, and you could, and I, like, I cut it off right, like a little bit after the whole crash and everything happened because I cut it off right before I started making some really nasty noises that I don't think people want to hear. And it's really, it, it was graphic. It was, it was graphic sounds of me in pain. And me suffering, and I didn't want, I don't want people to hear that. It was like really hard to hear when I when I had the video, but um, but yeah, you guys could check it out. You know, comments on that video if you watch this whole video, <laughs> and you know about that video because because that video doesn't get that many views. Um, I don't know. I guess like I only have like one video that's super popular, and thank you for all those people that have watched that video. I don't know how many times because. To help me make some a little bit of money, got me into the be able to monetize. So I got some other videos that have like decent amount of views, but nothing like that one. Like that one has like six hundred thousand views, and all my other videos, like the most after that is like in the thousands, like teen thousands, twelve thousand, eleven thousand, maybe one in the thirty thousands. Like I had my first video that kind of not went super viral, but a little bit viral was me lifting a car. And it was me lifting a car. Uh, I think. I forgot what car it was. It was a really light car. I forgot the a Geo. I forgot the manufacturer, but it was a Geo. And I just lifted it from the back corner and like, and then lifted it again and put it back. <laughs> and uh, that one got like thirty thousand views after like three years or something like that. But anyways, thank you guys so much. I'm rambling. It was uh, a nice little memory path thinking about all that stuff, you know, and gives me a little bit of a different perspective and reminds me of like. You know, watch how I talk to people, even though I've been trying. Um, yeah, thank you guys. Peace, everybody. I'm going to turn off the camera now.